The Odd Pod. The Odd Pod. Hello and uh, welcome to another Odd Pod. We haven't done this for a while, so I thought I'd go and delve into the Manx Radio Archive Department, in which we have miles and miles of open reel tape, cassette tapes, uh, mini discs, audio files of broadcasts throughout the years. Kelly's Eye ran on this station for a long while where the legendary historian Peter Kelly and the late David Collister took a look at various buildings and structures around the island. And today we take it appeal in a programme which was first broadcast on this station on the 31st of August 1995. I smell kippers. Peter, what's Kelly's Eye looking at today? Not a lot, David. I've got my eyes closed because the setting sun is in them. (laughs) It is a bright evening sun, there's no doubt. It is, it hasn't gone down yet. It looks like the Indians are sending smoke signals. Oh no, it's not, it's a jet that's gone over Peel. Um, the two of us are sitting on a seat together. Um, the sun is warm, the seagulls are making a lot of noise. There's not a smell of kippers. There would have been one time where we're sitting. And I'm actually looking at the three legs of man, except it's actually nearer to a two and a half legs of man. One of the feet seems to have disappeared for a start, I think, is it? It has, so it, it wouldn't stand on whichever leg it lands. <laughs> but, uh, yes, it's a rather old, carved three legs, set in a circle. Something uh, like a chevron next to it, isn't there? Well, yes, on either side there are two more circles with shields in. One has certainly got a chevron, that's a sort of inverted lance corporal stripe with something underneath which is weathered away, and on the other one, whatever was on it... Um, possibly another chevron with yes. two little things above and one below, also badly corroded. Um, they haven't always been here. A bit of a fishy tail to it, I think, David. Uh, they were in one time set high on a building, of which, if we look alongside, there's a, a stone with the remains of a carving, which we can make out something of this building, something by... Mrs. Locke, etc. Anyway, uh, we're in what I can recall as Curtis's Kipper Yard, um, from the side of Curtis's building, and actually says Moore's Kippers, so perhaps they were here before Curtis's. Uh, it was all cleared, and in 1984 the commissioners created this sort of grassed area, some play equipment down the bottom, and um, it was at a time when one of the three cloth workers' schools that uh, had been uh, was demolished and the commissioners took possession of some of the artifacts, uh, the shields which were up on the side of the building, the foundation stone which is here, and it had a sort of spire effect on this particular one and I rather think uh, what is now a sundial over the far side of this garden um, was part of that small spire. And, and they came from uh, a cloth worker school somewhere else other than here, did they? Oh, certainly not on this site, no. Um, m- many will know the Philip Christian Centre, the Philip Christian Hall. Well, that was one of the cloth workers' schools. That got too small, so on the outskirts of Peel, in fact, where Shoprite now stands, uh, a new cloth workers' school was built, and this foundation stone appears to read A.D. 1858. Perhaps I should have looked a few things up before I came. certainly says it was laid by Mrs. Locke, and um, that particular school was designed by a chap called Porter, an architect based in London who did a lot of work for the Cloth Workers Guild, of which, of course, Philip Christian, going way, way back, uh, was a member. And as I think most people in Peel know, he left money um, for Peel, and particularly to establish a school, having been born in what I think is known as Reist Lane. The remains of his cottage is there, looking rather forlorn. And um, uh, that school was built, and even that proved to be not big enough. And in the 1890s, they had an architectural competition for a new school alongside, of which one of the entries came from Bailey Scott, and it was a terrific design, um, if you like and follow the work of Bailey Scott. But obviously the assessing committee from Peel didn't think much of this modern fangled thing. What they'd have thought of the ShopRite building, I don't know. But (laughs) anyway, uh, the job went to local lad, who in fact was practising in Birkenhead for many, many years, Um, T.W. Cubbon, the architect, who also designed Hanover Street School and Park Road School um, and some of the others of that period in the 1890s. He seemed to get all the plum jobs, including the abattoir for Douglas Corporation. So he designed, in fact, the 
new cloth workers school with its technical block uh, which is the, the only thing remaining up there that's now the doctor's surgery a combined surgery and well after the um, demolition which took place in the creation of this garden Shoprite had in the meantime of course converted the old school into uh, a Shoprite building and I used to show slides of this and say this is the way to uh, treat old buildings, recycle them, turn them into um, uh, a supermarket if you like, there's an open space, it's big enough and then what are they going to do and pull that down as well so uh, <laughs> I can't use that as an example anymore, well I can but um, it's not there for people for to see for themselves just to go back to the three legs and the chevrons and so on, the um, rings that, in which they're set are obviously sandstone. The inscription that we've been looking at is also sandstone, though rather older by the look of it. And yet the three legs and the other um, pieces there are in a different type of stone. They look almost as if they might have been made in cement. Well, yes, they look that way. They're not. They're in probably Portland stone. It's quite a white stone. Um, well, it's certainly white where the weather has, has got to it. Um, th those rings, the, the sandstone, of course, that they're made out of is not peel sandstone. It sounds ironic, mm. but it would be brought in from Whitehaven um, is the most likely. I mean, it, it could equally be Walton uh, near Liverpool, but probably Whitehaven was quite a strong connection shipping wise um, the reason being of course the peel sandstone which we look at the wall behind us uh, doesn't lend itself to be dressed uh, that is smoothed off it weathers badly uh, uh, and I think um, the weathering on these uh, roundels would depend greatly on which side of the building it was compared to you know the wind and the weather and equally with the foundation stone not knowing now where that was positioned it has delaminated, and of course it's in three pieces. Um, I presume it was originally in, in one and it's probably been dropped or broken during the demolition and, and put together. In fact, I did wonder for a while if, in fact, we've lost a couple of letters en route. No doubt the newspaper of 1858, if that is the right date, will give us a clue um, as to what it really says on it, because they did have this tendency to uh, repeat the words and also if it was hollow underneath it, it no doubt had a, a bottle put in it with coins of the realm and newspapers of the day and so on. Uh, again, with the intention that whenever a building was demolished you would find these and, and have examples of everyday life. But what the papers did at the time, they listed everything that was there. So you, you'd never have to get the bottle out to know. You, you'd just got to read the newspaper. The Odd Pod. Odd Pod.